It looks like we've got a great group. So let's go ahead and dive in. Um, we are so excited to be here. Thank you all so much for joining us. We're gonna have some fun today. We have Jaime and Sherry, um, two of our partners at the TLC Gardens team and in the studio today. And many of you know Sherry as our lead designer and creative direction at TLC. And we also have Jaime Rodriguez. He's our construction project manager. And I can say from working with them that these two are seriously an unstoppable team. <laughs> they both have such a passion for steel fabrication. Um, and with their leadership and expertise, our team is creating steel features for any outdoor living space. Um, they're gonna share with you now a couple of our most unique steel features, and then we'll jump into the Q&A. We can't wait to hear um, all of your questions and everything you guys are working on. And with that, uh, Sherry and Jaime, feel free to take it away. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for the live Q&A today on steel. Uh, it's great to see you, Dwayne, Gretchen, Andrea. And I see we have some other, Bill Ripley. Hey, how's it going? I know you, man. <laughs> So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna show you some custom steel elements that we um, designed and then built and fabricated and then installed in the field. These elements we'd never designed before. So we didn't have a chance to necessarily iterate like we normally do multiple times. A lot of things that we build, we've iterated multiple times. So we know exactly what we're doing when we build it. With these, it was a custom design and we had to figure out how to do it along the way. So we're gonna share some stories with you and some photos of how we went about doing that and two different custom elements. The first is a custom steel mailbox and the second is a custom steel sign. Both of these were done for our Gallagher Farm project. Pull up the mailbox design. We just talk a little bit about the design itself. The mailbox was designed so that a person standing it would be about head height. We had a cap on top of it and a mailbox that would be made out of wood. Originally, we looked at maybe making it out of stone, but as we talked about it more, we decided that we wanted to make it out of steel panel. With the dialogue with the client, we wanted to include numbering for the addresses as well as a custom cutout design that matched their master bedroom panel that we created in their outdoor living space. That was to create some, you know, kind of um, privacy for them in that area. So we matched the pattern of the steel cutouts for that so that we could get a repeating pattern on the site and some cohesion with the design. The mailbox itself was about two foot 10 on all sides. And then we had a brand that was for the Gallagher farm and we wanted to combine wood and steel. So this was just the, the layout of the design that we started with. In this first photo, we're in the shop, right? I mean, <laughs> we were working on the mailbox and uh, you know, we've got Aaron inside. So yes. that's the story. <laughs> so this, this picture here is um, take two on, on the mailbox frame. The first frame we tried, it was a, uh, once we tried our panels on it, it was a little too big. So we had to take everything down and put the panels up by themselves and then do the inner, uh, the inner frame uh, after, after we put the panels on together. So that was definitely interesting. It was a learning curve, but it was definitely fun. Yeah, it was. I mean, I remember putting all the panels around the frame and going, oh, they're yes. too, they're too small. Um, you could kind of see here that the laser cuts on the edge, these are laser cut panels. Um, and we had built the frame inside to the dimensions, but it was a little bit too small. So we rebuilt that. But there's also another story about Eric being inside, like why he was inside and how he got there. <laughs> yes, Aaron, Aaron was a, a smaller and thinner guy like myself. So we had to put him in there. Uh, great fabricator. So we got to um, uh, put a, put him on, on a ladder and he had to climb down in there so he could tack weld all over a uh, frame. Um, yeah, yeah, so he got to climb the ladder and he jumped inside and part of this was like the sequence we were doing. I mean, we've got the frame that we've created. 
And then we, we, we laid the panels on the outside of that frame. So it was completely closed off. And we're going to talk about that a little bit at the end, like how we might change that differently Definitely. for next time. But it was a fun photo um, to share with you guys. The other thing I want to point out is you can see the cutouts up here above Aaron's head. And the cutouts, when we first did them, I mean, I remember you texting me like, what are we going to do? <laughs> yes. Um, it was, it was, I mean, it was something that we had, yeah. we hadn't done, like you mentioned, we hadn't done before. So we were working as a, as we went through. So I was, I wasn't sure if we were going to leave those holes uh, as a hollow or, or right. we were going to do something behind it. And this is, this was a great solution here. Yeah, it was a great, just to put some metal behind it. You'll see how it patinaed later. And it was one of those design things that I was trying to match the master bedroom screen, which was a see-through screen with holes. And so I just did holes, but of course, when we did this, you could see through uh, to the frame. So we put steel behind them to maintain the pattern. This is um, just the other side of it. And this is what it looks like right after we do a treatment, right? Yes, we use a, um, I forgot the muriatic acid. acid solution, a 10 to, 10 to 1. So that way it's not as strong, but it creates a chemical reaction on, on the metal. So we spray it on there and then we add water. As soon as we get moisture on it, it creates, it activates the chemicals and it creates the rust on it. Yeah, and it, you know, it, it, right now it looks just kind of white, um, but we always love how it, how it develops in patina. This photo is the wood door. Um, I made a book matched EPE door that was to be set into the mailbox. And this is when we were actually attaching the hinges. And there was a number of challenges with this part too. <laughs> Definitely. Um, first of all, I mean, the EPE is really, really nice wood, but it's really hard. It's hard to work with. Uh, it's hard on the machine, on the drills. It's hard on the um, bits. Yep. Another another thing is that the EPE is a little heavy on the heavy side, so it was heavy on the hinges. The hinges were for I think three pounds. Yep. But, and there uh, you go. Yes, <laughs> that's exactly what happened. So we had we had to step back and modify our hinges and take another approach. Yeah, we did. We had to get more heavy duty hinges. These hinges were actually rated uh, for 28 pounds, but they ended up not doing what we wanted them to do. They wanted we wanted it to slow open. So we got more heavy duty hinges. The other thing we've been kind of talking about um, is that if we did this again, we would actually have this panel pre-drilled. Um, what we did was actually tapped it in place. And that was a little challenging because the space was so small. It was hard to get the accurate marks right. and it was hard to get the taps in. I remember <laughs> I was working on that. Just the, the limited access to, mm -hmm. uh, to put another wrench into it. Yeah. It did, literally, <laughs> another wrench. Mm -hmm. um, so this is an image of uh, the mailbox after we got the, you know, kind of the door hinges uh, finished, we just had the muriatic gas, and we were starting to put the wood on the side um, and spacing that out. And here you can see the wood spacers that we use between uh, the EPA to get a consistent gap between the wood. We, we next had to kind of tackle the, the sign in terms of the numbering, and that was also an intriguing process um, that we went through. Yes, yes, definitely. Uh, we, we ordered aluminum numbers, yeah. uh, but we, we tried epoxy uh, to glue them onto the, the sign. Um, of course, from trees and fall, it was just really hard on, on yeah. the epoxy. So the, the magnets weren't holding them good enough. Yeah, it wasn't. And here I had used super magnets um, to bind to the back of the numbers. And the super magnets did really well to bind to the metal. But the epoxy holding the super magnets to these aluminum uh, pieces of uh, address numbers actually ended up being a problem. So you'll see later on that we actually had the numbers cut out, laser cut out in steel because uh, now the super magnets can just attach to both of them and we can just tack them on. The nice thing about that is we talked about, I mean, I talked about attaching them directly to the mailbox, but we wanted to be able to remove the numbers should we ever have to, you know, refinish the surface or do any upkeep on the mailbox itself. So the nice thing about that is we can move the numbers around. 
You'll also notice the brand up here. We had that laser cut out. That's for the actual Gallagher farm, which we did this project for. And this is the back side, just showing how it's starting to patina after we put the muriatic acid on in the treatment. And what would you say, how many days was this after we had treated it? It, it actually, it's, it goes pretty quick. So maybe this is on the fourth day. So it, it, it does its job. That's yeah. what I was thinking. It was pretty, pretty, pretty quick. This is just showing the door and the mailbox patina from the front. So you can see, you know, how the um, cutouts are coming out with the, the different levels. This is the mailbox installed on our site, uh, on the street side. Mm -hmm. This is right after we got there. And we, that was an interesting story too, like how we got it in the truck and how we got it out. We, it was about how many pounds. Say. Um, I say this mailbox is at least 800 to 900 pounds. It took uh, six of us with straps so that we could lift it and unload it onto the, to the platform. Um, our base is a three by three concrete pad. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's not going anywhere. Um, we did throw it on a quarter inch plate and then rolled it the mailbox onto the plate. So it's yeah. secured. I thought that was a really great idea too, because we had all these straps, we were holding it up and we were, there was five of us and we were trying to rotate it to get it onto that plate, but that plate really helped to, we could set it and then we could just feel it just kind of jockeying in place. So that worked out really well. Um, for kind of for setting it uh, on the site, and then we, you know, we had the client come out and check it out. This is what it looks like from one street side going north, seeing the letters. Uh, and this, I mean, this came out good. We had to embed the magnets into the wood epay actually, and then we had the epoxy on the numbers. So that was also an interesting process that we went through because we had the spacing on the wood, right? Yes. So, we <laughs> so we had to uh, place it on the wood first and make sure we had the right spacing because um, we we have a, uh, with it being magnetized, it creates a shadow line. So we have to have the right spacing for each number so that the shadows don't cast on, yep. on onto the other numbers. Yep, yep. And, you know, we, a couple of them, of course, landed right on where there's a gap. Mm -hmm. And so we had to do, we had to change the spacing and finagle that a little bit. We just had screws that we screwed into the wood that the magnet stuck to. And this is after it's been on site aging a little bit. You can now see how the patina has developed. It's really gotten dark. We really, we're really happy with it. Um, and then uh, here, um, we actually had the clients out and we were standing there as the mailman came by. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the mailman came in and he, he gave us a lot of pointers on this. One thing he pointed out, luckily I was there. He was, it's, it's very nice, but it's not deep enough. So he tried putting the boxes in and it was a little, it's not deep enough. It was too so short. <laughs> we definitely had to uh, come back and modify it. So we went to full depth of the, of the mailbox, which is two, uh, two feet mm -hmm. ten. Um, so now it's, it's, it's plenty of space. Yeah. So we had to recreate, I mean, we had to recreate this sleeve. So just so you know, when we made the frame, this mailbox um, itself, the box itself where the mail goes was a sleeve that went inside the frame. And we had to take that out, take the back of it out and re-weld the sleeve that goes all the way through uh, the mailbox to full depth. And then we talked about some of the things we would actually kind of change about this design now that we've been through it by now once all the iterations we would do. Yes, yes, definitely. So one thing uh, we could definitely change is um, access or provide access, not only through the top, but maybe to uh, on the side. Uh, we were thinking of maybe using a full panel and um, just bolt it onto one side instead of having everything welded on all the four sides. Yeah. Because I think that would be great if we, you know, I'm kind of tracing out if we had a panel like this on the back that we could take off on the back side, then that would allow us to, we actually have a plate on the top, which is hard to see. Um, I'll zoom in here, but we actually have a plate on the top of the mailbox where we anchored this plate on to give a shadow line to the top. Mm -hmm. And that went around, we actually have a piece of wood here, a wood frame, and we actually made this follow the outline. But the way that the mailbox was built this first time around, we don't actually have access to the inside. So it'd be nice to be able to take the panel off the back and be able to mount those bolts from the bottom 
and also to be able to access the inside of the frame. And then of course we talked to the clients and they were like, it'd be really nice to have storage <laughs> in the back for like those bigger packages. Correct. So, We've got a lot of uh, yeah. uh, under, under leg room, we'll, we'll call it, to use. So why not use it? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, lots of things that we learned through the first design and build iteration, and that's the final product. So this is the original sign uh, design that showed the front of the sign with the letters. And this changed a little bit. You'll see in the final piece, we ended up deciding we don't need the street and we didn't need the name of the farm. This gray area is actually Ipe wood that needed to be fit to the sign. And then this is the sign from the south elevation because they have a driveway that goes by, which you'll see. So we need both the front face and the side. The sign was designed in the landscape to hide an electrical box as you approach to make the sense of arrival as you came into the entrance for the house and the landscape. We were creating an Italian Renaissance parking area that matched the front of the house. So this was really key in kind of hiding that box so it's not the first thing you see and giving it the uh, feeling that we wanted. So this first image was the beginning, <laughs> the beginning of the sign. Yes, this, this here is a two by two uh, steel tube that we, we capped it with some sheet metal and that would create the, the base and itself, the base. correct. Um, the yes. two by two frame you, that you guys see on top, that is the, the outline of the sign itself. Yeah, and you can see how we actually, we put the sheet steel over the same two frame that's inside here. And then you can, I'll just zoom in here a little bit, but um, you can see that the guys are, you know, they've had to grind uh, the edges after the weld to get the welds, you know, kind of finished. So this is going to be the base of the sign that you'll see later on in the images, the photos. And this is another image that I really like because we actually have this set on one of our outdoor planters that Correct. we just built. Yes. <laughs> um, and you've got a T-square here. Yes. So we, we um, we took all of our expertise that we've got out of the field. We do a lot of masonry and stuff like that. So all the squares, all the tools, they're pretty similar, just um, in the shop. In the shop, right. And this is a good angle because it really shows how long this is. This is six feet, 10 inches, which is gonna be relevant to some of the next photos here, and some of the challenges that we had in making this. So here we've got a picture of it in the shop. And I remember I walked in the shop and I was like, it's too big. It looks enormous. <laughs> it's, it was definitely heavy. It was mm -hmm. um, one way we had to move it in the shop. We, we don't have any joists or anything like that for steel. Um, so we, we, see, we would set stick. it on concrete stakes, round concrete stakes, and then we would push it around the shop. Yeah, that's right. We were, we were pushing it around yes. on pipe. And one of the things that's really neat about this is uh, normally when you're creating something like this, you would you would actually get these pieces cut separately. You would cut a piece uh, and you would cut them all, but that's not actually how we built this. Not this one. Um, the process for this one, there's two, two pieces of steel for this sign. So we bent all the corners, we bent the top. All the, all the corners you guys see is actual, actually one, one solid piece of steel. So we, we had some challenges. We, we scored our lines and then we went through and it took maybe six of us to bend, get those bends in. And it was this top end that was the most challenging, right? Correct. Like, I mean, that was that was a challenging one because it, it's the one that could be exposed. So that's yeah. that was a, the tough one. So you scored the back of it and then you had like a pipe on the back and then you had like all of you or did you use the vice grips to, to uh, pull it over? We viced it with mm -hmm. uh, pipes and then we tack welded some pipes so that we had more leverage. Nice, so. nice. Yeah, that, and we were both, Jaime and I were both looking at this and we were concerned because there's some imperfections here. We couldn't get a total like complete fold on right. it and we were like, oh man, you know, like this corner wasn't quite, and, and this comes from us doing the planters and just really trying to get the best quality that we could. But in the end, it actually was, it was something that one didn't end up being a big deal and two, it ended up giving a lot of character. Yes. Um, so um, this is just another angle in the shop where you can see the base that we showed you earlier. 
So this is the base and that tube frame that we showed you is right inside here. We actually set the steel panels Correct. along the tube. Around it. Yep. And this is another look at it as it's aging with the muriatic acid. Now we've put the um, wood panels on the EPA panels that went on the front and the side. Then we had to figure out how to get it in the truck, didn't we? <laughs> at this point. That, like, that was yeah. another challenge. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, we, we had no no piece of machine in the shop then. So it took it took all of the guys with pipes to roll it up up uh, and onto the trailer. Yeah, and we're talking about at 800 pounds or so? Uh, at least, yeah. yeah, at least 800 pounds. Um, same same way when we unloaded it on site, there was like four, 46 inches of snow on the ground. Um, it was freezing cold. So we- Of course, we, it's a beautiful day. We were it, it was a perfect the working weather day. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so we had to, we the best we could do, we unloaded it there as close as we can. Yeah. And, we left it for the next day. Yeah, yeah. And we did the same thing in reverse. It was like as Jaime was saying, and you can imagine with this and the pipes and getting it off the off the truck, but we also used the mini X to set it with some Yes, crap. yes, we yeah. used the mini X. We rolled it a couple of D rings, lifting eye hooks on top of that sign, and it took everything the mini had to set it in there. Were we yeah. I, I remember it just like tipping a little. Yes. Like, <laughs> Um, so we had D-rings on the back side of the sign. We often use D-rings when we're constructing the steel. We use them for the window wells that we actually set on the same site that I made out of steel. And that does make it easier to kind of attach to it. Yes, yeah, so you but, have more control. Yeah, yeah. So if we do a bigger sign, we'll just have to get some guys on the back side of the mini X so it doesn't tip. Some more weight on it, yeah. <laughs> So this is what it looks like in the site. This is the Italian Renaissance Drive that we, we had created. What we started with was actually an angled circular drive that went around these trees. We were creating a squared up drive to the house. This is the side just to show you what the sign is hiding. Mm -hmm. um, and there really wasn't anything we could do about this box. It was right in the middle where we wanted to create this entry and it was right at this beautiful entry of the home in the courtyard. So the sign was the solution for that. And the driveway actually carries around the side, which is why we carried the wood around the corner. We also have a cap on the top of it here that gives it the shadow line. And we did the same thing with this cap as we did with the mailbox. And then this is what it looks like from the front as you're approaching the house. Of course, you don't see the um, utility box. So we really enjoyed sharing kind of our journey with you guys. And we'll open it up now to any questions that you have. And uh, just raise your hand or put it in the chat and Emma will uh, call on you. See Gretchen raised her hand there. Yeah, I think I'm in the mood. Is that okay? Yeah, go for it. Um, how do you fasten the um the epe to the with blind fasteners? It's blind fastened. It looked like we glued it on. So oh, okay. We use, a, we use a glue called Fuse It. Okay. Construction glue that has uh, flexibility, and it'll move with the freeze thaw. Oh, okay. Fasten it on. If you'd want to fasten it from the inside of the sheet. Mm -hmm. um, um, but then again, that would cut off our axis and stuff. That and it would. Yeah. <laughs> we need an axis panel. Then yes. we could do that. Mm -hmm. um, but you could, you could, um, if you prefabricate the sheets, you could redraw Correct. and go into the wood, and mm -hmm. you could do it that way. And you'd want to make sure that they don't go all the way through. Right. right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. Anyone else have any questions? So if there is no questions, Emma, too, we can just open it up to um, the plan dialogue. We can say hi. Hi, 
I don't see any other hands being raised right now, but um, if anyone else has a question come up, feel free to jump in and ask us. Great, so uh, now we can just say hi to everyone. Dwayne, I see you are uh, here. How's it going, man? <laughs> You're going to unmute or you're going to join us? I'm, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm doing like 10 things at one time, trying to reply, reply to emails, changing designs, following up, but I'm here. I love it. Um, yeah. So what are your thoughts? If, if we're dropping in questions, um, the wood was the question and it was answered. Um, okay. That was my question. And it was like, I missed a type of wood and I heard Gretchen say Ipe. So those really were my questions that were already answered. Okay. All right, and on the steel design, you're gonna use some the of those. Design and steel designs. alone. Yeah, I see. I see the possibilities of a of a bunch of other ideas with that. I mean, it's really sweet how you guys are doing that. Yeah, like you can use it in just about any any area of the design. Yeah, there's so many different functionalities. Yeah, that's just really the starter of what you guys are doing. Like, there's so much other. Um, things to do. Like I have a project I'm working on in Indianapolis that it looks like it's going to be a lot of that. I mean, just all over the, all over the project. Nice. What kind of steel are you going to be doing? I, that's why I'm, I'm going to consult you for that. Oh, great. That's, that's our, <laughs> yeah, that's our yeah. next Zoom meeting. I don't know anything about steel. It's just, I call it steel. It looks, just looks like steel. I don't know what color <laughs> styles or, or what to do with it. So that I'm consulting with you for that. Yeah, as you're throwing it together, get together with me and Jaime. We'd be happy to share. Of course, um, yeah. Design and build and, you know, um, strategize and synergize. How about you, Andrea? How are you? I can't hear you. Would you I'm, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. How are you? How is Inside Out Design? It's good. We're trucking right along. It's busy season for us, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it is for everybody at this point. Yeah. Are you doing any steel work, any steel designs that you're working on? Uh, yeah, but same one I was telling you about last time that you had this. Um, so we are actually building that curved wall now. Nice. Okay. So we'll see how that turns out. Are it's you using panels? How are you approaching the construction of that? Um, so we are pouring some footings behind or piers behind the wall about four feet behind the wall and then making triangular um, like basically with angle iron to anchor it to those piers and then also rebar down um, attached to the wall and then in like probably a foot and a half or two feet into the ground. So we'll see how that goes and then we're going to cap it with stone. What kind of stone are you capping it with? Um, it is, what is it called? It's some sort of sandstone. It's like tan and gray. It's really pretty. I forgot the name of it. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's, oh, it's um, South Hills. South Hills um, flagstone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That makes me think about the wall we did at Gallagher because there was a lot of challenges was, with that. Oh, yeah. With the panels and everything. What did we end up, I mean, with the piers, we ended up doing a triangle, but we ended up doing something a little bit unique. You, you came up with that on the piers. So we, we set the piers and we kind of secured everything down with um, T posts. We went oh, down like five right. feet and we, yep. we set those in with um, the mini actually. So right. yeah. yeah, that was that was fun and intriguing. It yeah. was like the way that we anchored the wall because it was actually a retaining wall. It wasn't just a decorative wall, it was a retaining wall in the driveway. So it's supporting a lot of weight. How tall was it? Highest, it's 28 inches. Yeah, 28 inches. Yeah. yeah, that's still pretty big. Yeah, this one's only 18 inches, so it's not huge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And more of a decorative, I mean, you're using it as it's, a It is wall. retaining. Um, it's retaining and a sitting wall, too. What's the thickness of the steel that you want to A quarter inch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we would we went with a quarter inch, but it wasn't thick enough. Yeah, I think the wall was just too long. It was too it was long. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think we would do three eighths of an inch um, minimum on the wall for the driveway if we did it again. The other challenge was the panels and where we brought the two panels together. Mm -hmm. The seam itself. Trying to get the seam right 
was challenging with we had big sheets and they were eight feet wide mm -hmm. and we were trying to get the seams to match up and you got the equipment holding the panels and you got guys mm -hmm. trying to weld. Um, the, the seams are, are a challenge. So we talked about maybe next time having tabs on them where they came on together. Side, yeah. yeah. Um, so I don't know if you're, I don't know how you're handling the seams on your wall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, your I mean, wall. yeah, I don't really know yet because we, I really wanted one big long piece. It was supposed to come in 24 feet and uh -huh. came in three eight foot sections. So now that's another issue that we have to figure out. <laughs> I mean, if we were doing that again, how would we do the seams? How would you do the seams? I'm thinking we'll use the, um, well, I guess we'll have to use the angle iron. I don't know. Uh, we would, I think we would definitely do the tabs and then that long um, square tubing on the top, maybe like two inches from the top. That way it lines your top. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That really did help. The we ended up room, using yeah. that square tube we welded on the back side of the steel and it did help mm. line up the yes. joints but it also made it a little bit stronger so it didn't bend we were having problems with <laughs> you think about quarter inch steel and you think it's strong <laughs> you think it's got a lot of tensile strength but we because it was so high mm -hmm. and we had the seams it was bowing out it was bowing out with the weight Hmm. So it wasn't thick enough. And so adding the two by two steel also added the tensile strength to that. So that might be something you might want to think about. You can get tube steel in all different spec sizes. You can get it all the way down to half an inch, half, half an inch. inch. So you could put that on the back side of your panels, mm -hmm. 18 inch wall, and it would help you line up the seams so that you could get a nice clear weld. You can also use flat bar in thinner stock to make little tabs. Because mm -hmm. if you have tabs, then they just line up. Say this is the outside of your walls towards me, then your tabs are in. They can line up and you can bolt through the tabs. And then you don't have to have somebody holding the sheet steel, which is what we had a big machine holding the steel and turning the wall at the same time. With the smaller wall, you don't have that, but it's the weight, you know, that, that might be helpful. Um, yeah. And then the bends are going to be interesting. Have you tried to bend it yet, or? Uh, no, no. Okay. Yeah, that, that's going to be super interesting. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting. How would we go about bending? We haven't done a curved wall. I'm thinking about that. And we do the folds all the time. I mean, we've done folds. We've done. We did a curve at Gallagher. Yeah, we did. But the, the way we did is that we we tacked both sides, and then um, both ends, and then we stacked uh rebar rebar pieces as we went through working to mm -hmm. on the curve and then tacking everything and then back filling as we went that way the curve stays in mm, that's a great way to do it yeah you tack both sides how long is your how do you know what your radius of your curve is uh the radius i believe is 610 but the arc is about 20 feet okay okay mm -hmm. Well, and rebar is such a, I mean, it's such a great tool because you have it all the time. Like yeah. you have it for every project, so you can grab that and, and you know, tacking on both ends and then pushing it out and putting enough rebar in there because it will bend back. And then you'll be like, oh, that's not the curve I wanted, yeah. you know, like, right. like <laughs> working them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's, so hopefully you'll send us pictures of that when it's all done. Yeah, I hope it turns out. <laughs> well, that'd be great. Um, how are you, Gretchen? I'm doing well, and I've done a couple steel projects, and I've got one coming up. Oh, great! So, yeah, um, we're, we're putting. We're gonna. I'm making a bed, uh, a raised bed up against a house. So that is one of my concerns of is about the siding, okay. and dealing with that. Um, okay. Plus, it has. There's a weird um, pop out on the house that is from the fireplace, and I we haven't pulled off all the. It just has wood cladding on it right now. Right. But I want to kind of make a shallow, like a false um, deep bed, but make it shallow with plantings above it to, to hide it and continue this long bed. Gotcha. Um, okay. So and then that's drainage on that. And it's it, it'll be interesting. But I am concerned about having the steel bed right up against the siding, which is a hardy panel. Okay. I don't know if you have any things that you do when you're right up against the siding of a house. 
Usually I leave an air gap. I mean, we usually make a, so we'll make a planter around the whole thing, mm -hmm. an air gap between the siding so that, you know, the planter is out from that. And right. that could be, you know, two inches or three inches, but enough that, you know, you're, you don't have the steel right up against the siding. Okay. And you basically are making, you know, an enclosed planter with that. I mean, we did have, like, with the walls at Gallagher, we had those right up against the siding, and we ended up doing some different things with that. Yeah, I mean, we could do, you guys could do maybe like a double walled um, planter, mm -hmm. uh, which would, could work a, as a barrier, as a separator, mm -hmm. and then your second wall would actually create the wall for your soil mm -hmm. instead of that being up against the siding. Oh, I got it. We do that a lot for the fire pits. Like we create double walls. So we'll create an outer dimension, an inner dimension, and there's an air gap between those two mm -hmm. steel panels. And then we put a steel panel on the top for the aesthetics, right? So that aesthetically it looks like one whole piece, uh -huh. but it's actually got two separate pieces, right? And I think that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay. something else you could do. I mean, steel is such a structural component that when you talk about your hidden one where you want to create that hidden compartment, it's easy to make a, you know, even using U angle iron and U, you know, a couple of angle irons together and flat bar, you can create kind of hidden structural elements that will support that. Too. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. Well, the other, the other thing is I, I'm hoping um, the house itself has a steel door and a steel awning on it, right? which is all rusted. So I'm hoping it all ends up, you know, rusting together in the end. Uh, if you, have you had trouble with matching up uh, previous? I mean, it's definitely much older. It's, you know. Yeah, you're going to get different patinas. Yeah. Um, it's a different, different method because um, it takes over takes time to patine the way it is now but then once we apply our solution it, 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 it creates a different type of chemical reaction so it definitely comes on differently as a different with a different color in fact like even the mailbox if i go to each side i go to the front and i go to the mm -hmm. side and i go to the back each piece has got its own unique character from the muratic acid which is the steel just reacting Correct. to it and so if you're if you're trying to match, I would definitely set up expectations that it's not going to match exactly. <laughs> okay. that it's a piece of artwork, and that there's going to it's going to be close, but it's not going to be exact. Oh, I, I I designed in it that there's a, another one on the other side of the door, a smaller one, figuring that that would tie it all together in right. case that's the case, so that it doesn't yeah have this one area that's just the one color of uh, steel. So that sounds like fun though. I love it. That sounds yeah. like a cool project. We'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, so it's it's been so great to have you guys thank you so much for joining us this was awesome i need to give you a call too gretchen <laughs> i've talked to you for a while I know. I know. Yeah. thank you for doing this yeah you bet it's really fun um i see jeff and i see lauren you guys don't have a video on but did you have any projects that you want to talk about while you have jaime and i here let's see if they engage so, okay, I guess that's it. We'll wrap it up and thanks so much for everybody joining. Join, it was awesome to see you, man. <laughs> All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. We'll see you next month. Thank you. See you All next right. time. Bye.